Welcome to We Can Geek, your new comics preview for January 11th, 2012. I'm Mike Ortiz. And I'm the Chris Brown. So what do you got? All right, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead off with uh, kind of an interesting one, one that I'm sort of intrigued by, Whispers by uh, Joshua Luna. I've never read anything by the Luna Brothers before, but I hear nothing but good things. The Sword and Girl. Girls. Girls. And uh, Ultra. Okay, I've never read any of it. Everyone says good things. This is Joshua Luna branching out on his own. Um, I've read half of it. Kind of a, a strange, obsessive, compulsive young kid seems to be able to leave his body and in his dreams, and some weird things are gonna gonna happen. Um, yeah, intrigued by that one. Then we've got Amazing Spider-Man. This is the Daredevil first part of the Daredevil yeah. crossover. Man, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, no kidding. Sp- Spider-Man and Daredevil? All this needs is monkeys, and you'd be all Oh, all for heaven's sakes. Yeah, this is some chocolate and peanut butter right here. <laughs> so, yes, Amazing Spider-Man 6, 6, 677 should be, a, should be a fun one. Um, then, I've still been liking this Avengers 1959. Mm-hmm. It's a, This is the, the last part. You know, it's the, uh, the, the early Avengers, kind of the spy sort of Avengers. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm loving the fact that Craven's a part of the team. You know, Sabretooth, yeah. it works for some reason. And as I've said the whole way along, in this style and capturing this era, Howard Chaykin's stuff is perfect. Yeah. It, it works so well. I really, really like this book. Can't say enough good things. If you haven't read it yet, you, you should. Uh, then Demon Knights, this is a fun one. Um, I, I do like Paul Cornell, and I like the Demon. Um, it, it's got more of a, you know, a. You know, a period sort of feel that mm-hmm. uh, the Dungeons and Dragons-y kind of thing. You know, it's not in the, the regular part of the universe, but it's a fun book. I like it. I like Etrigan. Yeah. Um, even though I, I think he's supposed to start rhyming soon. He rhymes every not, now and then. I don't think he's going to be rhyming, rhyming, ah, rhyming continuously. Only because Paul that's... Cornell can't do it. He needs to take some poetry classes. <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> much it. He's like, that's hard. <laughs> Um, then the Incredible Hulk number four. This one does have green monkeys on the cover. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've been enjoying this. I like the idea of uh, Crazy Banner. I wasn't sure how I felt about, huh, they split Banner and the Hulk again. Yeah. Uh, but I like it. I, you know, I, I hadn't read a lot of stuff by Jason Aaron. I know people generally say good things uh, when he's in a groove. People seem to really like his stuff. Um, I hadn't read a lot of it, but I'm liking this. Mm-hmm. You know, I think Silvestri's artwork is pretty cool. Is he still on there? No, no, Will's Protasio. Oh, wow. Is the penciler on this one. Similar stuff. So we got all those image guys back. Yeah. All right. I don't think Jim Lee's going to be drawing it. Probably not anytime I don't soon. I think so. Um, yeah, that would, that would be a stretch. <laughs> uh, then we got the New Avengers number 20. Uh, it's the New Avengers. Uh, Daredevil's on the team. You know, uh, looks like they're fighting Scar in this one. This I believe this is still more of the uh, Dark Avengers stuff. More uh, Norman Osborn intrigue. Yeah. So that, that should be pretty cool. I, I always like it when Norman's up to no good. They keep kind of cycling him in and out. You know, they seem like yeah. they found a good... Basically, they've made him businessman Lex Luthor. Yeah, he's the Lex and, Luthor of Marvel. And, and it, it's working. You know, he's not the crazy... Man, they both uh, they are not working in green and purple. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make him a crazy businessman. That'll work better. And, uh, you know, I'm more of a Marvel guy, obviously. And yeah. if anyone was trying to make this argument to me sometime in the past, I might have gone, uh-uh. Yeah, that's, that's crazy talk. I'm telling my mom. But, yeah, it's it's pretty uh, pretty evident these days. Uh, Secret Avengers. This book has also been fun. Uh, Warren Ellis writing. Um, you know, it's it's a bit different than Bendis's yeah. uh, Avengers or Secret Avengers, but I like it. I like this uh, the the spy team getting the stuff done. You know, kind of under the radar, not the big big press team. Mm. Then uh, another one I've been digging quite a bit. Uh, the Shade. Yeah. I wasn't sure I felt about the first issue when you know you send Deathstroke in there and chop him to pieces. I'm like, what the hell just happened? But I think it's. It settled into a nice place for the shade, um, I, which I knew James Robinson would. When he's on something where he's really liking the characters and really clicking with it, mm. you you can tell. I mean, his passion comes through on these yeah. things, and and it's coming through baby. on the shade. And uh, this cover is fantastic. You know, this is where yeah, Robinson it's a, it's a times past. Ooh, Darwin Cook uh, did the art on this baby. Wow. Oh yeah, that'll be a fun one. Yeah, that'll be a real fun one. I'm sure Will will love that. He's a big Darwin Cook fan. So now he's going to start asking me questions about the shade. Um, then we've got, uh, 
Where am I at with my? Okay, I want to make sure I don't get my to my top. I'm a little yeah. confused with my stack here, but so uh, then the strange talents of Luther Strode, number four. You've been singing the praises of this book. This is a good book, and it's finally getting to kind of what's what's going on. And there's going to be the whole. It, it's it's not breaking any molds per se, but it's it's doing what it does very well. It's taking from a few different things, all different piles, all piles which I like, mm-hmm. and kind of mashing them together. This one, you know, the hero almost has to make a decision. And uh, there's about what he's going to be. We find out what that book is that he received and what happened and what's going on. And it feels like a little powers and there's a little, uh, you know, there's a little dark night in there. And, <laughs> you know, but, but again, I like it. These are all things that work for me. Yeah. And uh, we're only issue four. We still got two, two more issues to go. Yeah. Um, now, this is one. I, this has been one of my favorites. And I, I immediately had to read this uh, before, uh, before we recorded today because... I love this book so much. It's uh, more of it severed number six. It more of that mood, you know. Jack uh, Jack found out some things about his uh, his his compadre in in the previous issues. He he knows something happened with Sam. Um, this this gentleman that he's traveling with has his wallet. What's going on? And uh, Jack makes a move. And it, it just just when you think some things are turning up for Jack, Scott Snyder turns it on you again. And uh, we've got one more issue to go in this story arc. And uh, I was racing for poor Jack, and I hope he makes it out okay. Although I know he loses an arm. Eventually. Eventually. We don't know that it happens in this story. we don't. That's what I was totally thinking as I was reading it. I was like, you know what? He might might lose this in the war. Yeah. You know, this might have nothing to do with with this monster that's trying to eat him. Some sort of, uh, you know, machinery thing. Many years later, had nothing to do with it. Right, right. But, uh, but great, that would great be book. funny. Uh, and, and who knows? I wouldn't put it past Scott Snyder no, to do that. Because that would be the mo- like a, a really clever twist. Everybody's expecting, okay, this is how he loses the arm. Yeah. But, There's a monster uh, trying to eat him. Clearly, yeah. that's how he loses his arm, right? Maybe nope. not. Car accident, 1973. <laughs> <laughs> so what do, you, what do you got this week? Uh, I'm going to start off with Batman and Robin number five. Uh, All right. I've... I've I've been enjoying this book. I mean, this is the one that kind of focuses on the relationship between Bruce Wayne and Damian Wayne, and uh, and that's good stuff. I mean, okay. uh, it's it's still continuing. Uh, there's a villain. I'm not even sure who this villain is. Uh, he knows that Bruce Wayne is Batman. Uh, I believe it's the this guy was trained by the same detective that trained Bruce Wayne, uh, Ducard. Right. So he's basically another protege of the same master detective. So he knows all the things that Bruce knows. And he's trying to basically uh, turn. He knows all the tricks that Bruce knows. He knows all the tricks. Okay. He knows all, but he's he's not the same, not right. driven quite the same way. Uh, I don't know if this is a character created for this or if that character had appeared before. I have no uh, idea. But basically, he's trying to turn Damian Wayne and uh, remind Damian that he's the uh, the child of, of or the grandson of, of one of the greatest assassins in the world and. And reminds him that he is actually, in fact, better than all the human beings out there, uh, which which is something. So that kid would, needs the yeah. yeah. So uh, so it's really interesting, and it just uh, the, the story really is a backseat to just this really interesting dynamic between uh, Batman cool. and his son. Next up, uh, Bagley, Bendis and Bagley's Brilliant. Um, this is their icon book. Uh, I haven't read number one. I haven't either. But uh, I, I know I, it's got to be good, though, right? It, it's going to be good. And, you know, these things are, it's an icon. It's a limited series. Uh, it's I, been to some bag. I don't think there's been a an icon book. Well, I didn't, I didn't get that Takio book, but I probably will eventually. Right. But, uh, you know, I, I've loved all the icon stuff. Yes. Um, basically, it, it's an image book published by Marvel using Marvel's top talent. And, uh, you know. Who used to be Image's top talent. Yeah. Well, I mean, Bagley, not Bagley. Bagley. Not Bagley's Bagley. Uh, been pretty Marvel for right. a while, but yeah, it's it's basically some guy gets uh, some super brain powers, and that's where the title comes from. I don't know. I'll catch up, and I'm sure I'll enjoy it. Next up, Captain America. This continues uh, Alan Davis's run on the book. Um, this is just some. I mean, I, that I is some great art. I don't even care about the story at this point. With Alan Davis on here, this is just. Great, they're cranking the caps out at this stuff. point too. Yeah, yeah. They just had two just, issues two weeks ago. They're just knocking them out of there. They're catching up and they're double shipping. Uh, but yeah, this is this has been good stuff. I've really been enjoying this uh, relaunched Captain America. It's uh, they're they're dealing with some ramifications from the first story arc, uh, 
Okay. Uh, some issues as to whether or not Steve's super soldier formula is kind of kicking in and out. They also dealt with it in, in uh, Steve Rogers' super soldier. But yeah, this is, for, for a long time, the, the book had been bordering on an espionage book, but now it's back to standard traditional superhero cool. stuff. More standard traditional superhero stuff, Green Lantern. Uh, again, continuing the Hal Jordan team up with uh, his greatest foe, Sinestro. Uh, and this, mentor. And mentor. And it's this, been a great book. This has been fantastic. Uh, you know, Sinestro is back on his home world, which was uh, overrun by the Sinestro Corps, his own creation. And he has to basically free his home planet, which was really the, the protection and the safety of his home planet is what caused him to be evil although he's not evil in his eyes. Right. So that's that's really his thing, is he wants to protect his world, and that's that's why he kind of became a tyrant, to protect them from themselves, and now the, uh, his own creation is up against yes. it. So the irony is, uh, is... Well, I think the irony is lost on Sinestro, but it's not lost on the rest of us. But, uh, yeah, great book. This book got re-energized yes. with, the, with the relaunch. Probably better than any other book. Uh, that they, they did not just get a total reboot. Agreed. Yeah, I'm uh, loving it. Uh, Invincible. Uh, again, this, this has been a great book. More outer space fightings, I think. Looks like some stuff with Marcus. Uh, yeah, it looks like maybe here. these, these two, two uh, stories are kind of coming together, it looks like. Uh, so we've got uh, Alan, and we've got uh, Young Omni-Man, and we've got uh, Mark. And, uh, you know, this, this has really become a book about people making tough choices. Which I did not see that coming. It's been a fantastic storytelling. Kirkman, yeah. and I don't follow Kirkman on everything. And I like Kirkman, and I'll sing yeah. his praises at every chance I get. But I, the things I really like, I like Walking Dead and I like Invincible. Mm. You know, some of his other stuff's a little hit or miss with me. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not huge on Super Dinosaur. The kids love it. Mm. You know, I'm perhaps maybe too old for it. And there are other guys my age who are loving it. But yeah. maybe they got that kid part of them, and that's what they're, they're liking. And But... That book is just knocks my socks off yeah. every single time. And when he hits it out of the park, for me at least, I mean, it's long gone. Long he, gone. He really knows how to write for his audience. Like, I'm not a fan of The Walking Dead. I'm not really a horror movie guy. I'm not really a okay. zombie guy. But if you're a horror movie guy and a zombie guy, you love Walking Dead. I'm a superhero yeah. guy. If you're a superhero guy, you love Invincible. If you're a kid and you love kid stuff with cool-sounding toy things, you're going to love Super uh, super Dinosaur. Right. Uh, okay, the Infinite. If you love Rob Liefeld, you'll love The Infinite. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bust his bust his chops over that. But and I was and I was doing Haunt for a little while. It was Ultimate Spawn. Yeah, you know well, he's off Haunt now. So, yeah. So now you can bash Haunt all you want. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Invincible, great book. One of the best superhero. Actually, it says at the top the best superhero comic in the universe. And you know what? I will not dispute that. No, nor will I. Uh, Resurrection Man. I, I'm an issue uh, behind. Oh, actually, no, I am caught up on this. Um, this has been a really interesting book. Uh, you know, it's not a traditional superhero book. Uh, it looks like in here we're going to get some more explanation. Uh, I think he, yeah, Resurrection Man died. The man who can't well, die died yeah. at the end of the last issue. But it looks like we're going to get some, uh, some more information, and it looks like uh, Deathstroke is showing up. Yeah, the New 52 is a lot of crossovers coming now. A lot of crossovers. I feel like they've maintained the spirit of the characters they always had. Mm. Um, but the new characters are we're having some fun. They're, yeah. they're really stretching it and doing some interesting things. And uh, they're also kind of more non-traditional yeah. than they ever were before. Yeah, I mean, this is not a, a superhero book necessarily. No. Um, and what I, what I really like about this, and certainly uh, we have to assume, we don't, I mean, I've not read this, but my assumption is that... a a big part of this re relaunch has been to try out some properties that they've had sitting around for a while. Oh, possibly sure. properties that will work in other media. And this is a TV show waiting to happen. Agreed. A good TV show waiting to happen. Uh, next up, Scarlet Spider number one. Uh, this is this is kind of crazy. I'm excited about that one. We've uh, we've got the I mean the nineties just keep keep chugging on back. Uh, so well, it's twenty years old at this point. And, so and you know, I actually liked uh, the the Clone Saga at first, I thought there was some interesting stuff going Agreed. on. Uh, some interesting stuff spun out of it. It went out of control eventually. Right. I thought there was some interesting stuff at the beginning. And uh, I'm hoping that this picks up the spirit of that. This uh, comes out of Spider Island. Yes. Uh, Kane, one of the uh, other well, spider Well, they, they brought clones. him back when they were doing the clone kind yeah. of re relaunch. Like when they were like, well, here's what we really wanted to do in yeah. six issues. And then they had Kane in... 
you know that other story where they basically did the origin of Ben Riley. And right. Yeah. So they yeah they brought Kane back a while yep. ago. Uh, now they, they have kind of made him back into a more standard Peter clone. Yeah. Who's, it was like this huge disfigured thing, and then he was half tarantula, and now he's just another Peter Parker. Uh, but basically, Alex. and he's wearing one of uh, Spidey's high tech costumes uh, that he had built. And well, you got to bring those things back. I mean, oh yeah. What, what else did you put him in there? For? And this is, oh. you know, this is just a combination of some fun stuff that's been going on in the Spider-Man books. Ryan Stegman's a fantastic artist, local uh, guy. From what really? I understand, yeah, he's from okay. Michigan. And he's the all, also the guy who drew the cover of yep. Amazing Spider-Man 666. But uh, terrific. I like this tagline, all of the power, none of the responsibility. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. This could be fun. Just don't turn him into Deadpool. Just a little more spider stuff. Just yeah, don't turn already, him into Deadpool. He's already got the colors. Then with that tagline, it sounds like, uh-oh, <laughs> he's not the wisecracker. No. Oh, God. Yeah, this, but this could be fun. I'm, I'm looking forward Me to too. this. And you know what? I like this spider our Scarlet Spider costume a lot more than the sleeveless hoodie from years past. Yeah, but I liked Ben Riley. I did too. I, did. I actually wish that they had brought Ben Riley back instead of. You know, I wish they hadn't killed him in the first but, place. And you know what? Maybe we'll find out this was Ben Riley. Who knows? That's why he's not a tarantula. That's why. He's not a, uh, but it. Uh, the next up, unwritten number thirty-three. Uh, this is the fifth issue of this storyline, which okay. means now I can start reading it. Uh, it's halfway through. Oh, it's a ten-parter. It's a ten-parter. Uh, yeah, it's basically grown-up Harry Potter in a book that's really a lot more interesting and sophisticated than Harry Potter stuff. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, as, as I've said many, many times before, this is one of the best books being published uh, today. Uh, it's a tight, I mean, 33 issues, it's all still one big storyline. Yeah. It's going to have a, a finite ending the way that... You know, Lucifer and Sandman and Preacher has. I mean, that's kind of the Vertigo model and why the last man, all of that. Sure. So uh, when this is all said and done, this is going to be a great, great, just, you know, finite, complete set of stuff that you can hand to people who don't really read comics, but who have a degree in English. Yeah, sure. Uh, and, uh, and they'll love it. Uh, next up is uh, Wolverine and the X-Men number four. Uh, this is more fun at the new mansion. Uh, we've got Nick Bradshaw instead of, uh, uh, what was his Chris name? Chris Pacello. Chris Pacello. Uh, and How's his stuff look? It still looks fun. Yeah, I mean, this is a little bit more traditional. But uh, still fun, just not stuff. as, you know, stylistic, but yeah. still fun. Still tight stuff. And actually, it's got a little bit of an Art Adams vibe to it. Yeah, a little bit on that spots. Wolverine face. So, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, Jason Aaron's been doing a great job on this, an unexpected job. Lots of people uh, singing his praises. Yep. I mean, basically, uh, you know, we've got Wolverine at the uh, front of the classroom at the board. Everyone's uh, going crazy behind him. He's actually carving into the board. And I don't know where these tiny little night crawlers are coming from. I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to read that. But, uh, yeah, this, is, uh, this has really been a lot of fun. Uh, Jason Aaron has made me uh, read a book that I probably otherwise would not have read. And uh, that's my, uh, my stack. What's your top? All right, brings me to the, the top of my stack here. Um, this is one that I, I didn't even pay a whole lot of attention when I saw it on the invoice. And I, you know, I, I, I obviously paid attention when I saw it in the catalog. Mm -hmm. um, once I saw it on the shelf, I was like, ooh, man. Bruce Jones and Sam Keith, Batman Through the Looking Glass. Wow. You know, we had at uh, Christmas time, we had uh, Lee Bermejo doing uh, his Batman's version of A Christmas Carol. Mm -hmm. Now here, Bruce Jones and uh, Sam Keith doing a little Alice in Wonderland with Batman. Wow. Art looks amazing. There's like Mad Hatter, a lot of weirdness, and again, which totally fits yeah. Sam Keith's art Sam style. Keith is fantastic. And I, I do like his Batman stuff. It just never fits into the Batman, yeah. you know, proper mythos. But always fun. I am excited to read this. And you know me, I'm hot and cold on Batman. I read it from time to time, but I really, really miss the Max. Yeah. So I'll take any Sam Keith where I can get it because it always has that look and vibe oh, and that feel. Looks fantastic. So uh, that that is my top pick of the week is Batman Through the Looking Glass. Very cool. Uh, it's a what is that? It's a twenty two ninety nine hardcover. Nice stuff. But yeah, that should be good. What are you uh, looking at there? My pick is is unexpected. You I, I always... can't believe this. Uh, Wolverine three hundred. That's your top pick. That's my top pick, and I and I don't know why entirely. Uh, well, I do know. There's two words: Jason Aaron. Oh, okay. Um, and and, and two more words. Anniversary issue, and two more words: big sucker, because that's me. 
Yeah, so, I was just envisioning you with a wrapper around your head and a yeah. <laughs> white stick for a body. So, so, you know, I'm always a sucker for these kind of things, anniversary issues and renumberings. Uh, well, I'm glad they're doing it to Wolverine because that's one of the things that I was frustrated with about the character is he's had numerous series that will run a number of issues. You yeah. know, the first time it ran, what, 100-some issues, then they started it over and that ran almost 100 issues. Then they rebooted and you get the best there is and Weapon X and all these other things. Like, oh, just keep the numbering consistent, yeah, that's, you know? That's part of, of why I, I wanted to get this is I am curious as to what... Is how they got go there. In. I mean, they'd be like the three different series and maybe the original miniseries and four random issues of Alpha Flight and Amelia the Model from 1962. You know, who knows? But actually, it looks like they're starting this with the Wolverine number one, the John Buscema. Book. Okay, so the other four aren't even included. So the miniseries is not. Uh, yeah, this is kind of wild. So yeah, that's then part. they got all the others. Like Wolverine Origins. I saw Wolverine Origins. Part of there. the uh, part of the <sighs> fun. But it's cool. Like whatever. Yeah. At least they're going back to. A traditional numbering, and that kind of has me a, a little bit excited about yeah, it. Yeah, and actually, just the reminder of Wolverine's been around 300 issues. Yeah. I mean, you kind of forget that when they jump around a lot. He's never really had it. I think maybe 100. I don't know if he ever had a book go to 200. I don't think the original keep... series got up to two. Yeah, so, I mean, because unlike X-Men and Avengers and Fantastic Four and some of other, other these books that have had big numbered anniversary yeah. issues. Wolverine really hasn't because no. they keep retitling. So that was part of it. Uh, the other part of it is we've got some, uh, we've got Jason Aaron, uh, we've got Adam Kubert and Ron Garney uh, okay. on the artwork. Um, and yeah, I mean, J Jason Aaron, th six months ago I wouldn't have touched this book. But uh, then Jason Aaron's done such a good job kind of getting me back into the X-Men in general, Wolverine okay. in particular. Uh, will I buy 301? Maybe. But, you know, just for the anniversary part of this and just to kind of give it a shot. And because, you know, Jason Aaron's kind of floored me on a few other things. Right. Uh, it's at the point now where I'll give his, I'll give stuff that he's doing a shot if it's kind of in my wheelhouse. And it's got actually fantastic uh, Adam Kubert cover. That cover's too. awesome. So uh, I, I can't believe this. I can't even remember the last time I bought an issue of Wolverine. Actually, it would have been the, the Mark Miller Oh, uh, yeah, the Old Steve Man Logan. Logan. Uh, old Man Logan was the last time I bought an issue. It was the last time I read it, and of, I'm probably going to read this Wolverine. one. Wolverine. And, uh, and before that, God, it had been many, many years. So, yeah, Jason Aaron has really done the impossible. Right. One, making me read Jason Aaron because I had sworn off him. Uh, and two, I'm buying two Wolverine books this week. Two Wolverine books, two, two Jason Aaron books, and uh, I had a Jason Aaron in my stack. Yeah. I know. He's I think Jason, creeping in. Jason Aaron may be, uh, may be earning himself a little uh, a a title card. <laughs> so, uh, that, yeah, that's it. Wolverine number 300. Uh, go buy it if you're a sucker. And uh, quite, a, uh, quite a good stack of books this week. Mm -hmm. So, uh, with that, that is your Week in Geek.